how y'all cowards run aside. Ha ha. My name is Sergeant Brown, and I've been in law enforcement for 17 years. I sort of serendipitously learned about a job doing vehicular homicide investigations where we do collision reconstruction and put back together crashes where people are seriously injured or killed. How you figure out how fast they were going and all of the things that you can do with the evidence that's on the road. Today we have a very typical crash for an, an urban setting. We have a guy walking down the street, he's got headphones on, steps off the curb, a driver driving down the road, probably not paying as much attention as you should. Driving takes a lot of attention. Reacts to this by slamming on the brakes, skidding. He skids into the pedestrian. The pedestrian goes flying, lands on the ground. The driver steps out, calls 911, and our pedestrian is seriously injured. So a typical police response to a crash like this, uh, we saw the driver get out, he called 911. The 911 operators, while they're getting information from that driver, are typing furiously into their, into their computer. They're sending that off to a dispatcher who's actually dispatching that out to officers that are on the street while that call taker is still receiving information. Officers respond and they determine what kind of crash they have. In this case, it's a serious crash. We don't know if this guy's gonna live or if he's gonna die. The police officers there lock down the scene. We treat it like a crime scene because if this pedestrian dies, then we have possibly murder charges up to and including second degree murder charges on this driver. And we need to make sure that we collect all the evidence properly and we don't lose any of that evidence. And then they're gonna go back to their offices where they're gonna put this whole big puzzle back together piece by piece. So let's look at today's crash. We have 102 feet of skid in this case. The vehicle skids 41 feet to impact with the pedestrian and then skids another 61 feet where it comes to a stop. So our question is, how fast is this driver going when he hits the brakes? We're gonna take that total skid distance of 102 feet. And our formula for this is gonna be speed is equal to the square root of 30 times the total distance of the skid times our drag factor. We know tangibly from a measurement, it's 102 feet. Today, for a coefficient of friction, we're gonna use a 0.7 for our F. So, how fast is he going when he hits the brakes? Well, we're gonna say 30 times our distance of 102 feet times our coefficient of friction, which in this case is a 0.7. We're gonna multiply those three, and then we're gonna take the square root of that number. That's gonna give us 46 miles an hour. In this case, our victim didn't die, and our suspect went to jail. We did the math correctly, and we got the right answer, 46 miles an hour, criminal speed. Had we done the math wrong, we would have come out with a very different answer and a much smaller number. The driver wouldn't have been arrested and gone to jail, and we would have done a disservice to our pedestrian who was seriously injured in this case. If you do the math correctly, it never lies.